Let's bow our heads just a moment now in prayer. Lord, we are grateful for this grand time of fellowship that we have assembled here in this Philadelphia church in Chicago for no other reason but to honor and give respect unto thee and to worship thee with all of our hearts. And we would ask, Lord, that you would meet with us tonight in a very special way, giving to us the desire of our hearts, if it so be thy will, Lord. And we do believe that if we will walk upright before you, that you will withhold no good thing from us. Therefore, we believe it's your will to bless us tonight. We ask a special blessing for the ministers who are here in the service, has come to the convention to be filled with good things, to go home with a new start and a new look, a new vision from God and His work and His will. And we pray that you'll also remember the sick tonight, Lord, for there are many who are needy must have a touch from you to continue on, especially those that are so seriously ill tonight, that's calling in from the hospitals and around over the country. We pray for them. We ask for those who are not in the way yet, that are looking on. May this be the time that they'll say, Yes, Lord, let me join their ranks. May they lay aside every weight that does the easy to set them, that they might run with patience the race that's set before them, looking to the author and finisher of the faith, the Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord, I'm tired tonight. And I pray that your mercies will be extended to your servants. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You be seated. Uh, is Mr. Don Ramirez here? Is Don Ramirez here? There's an important long distance call for him. I don't, yeah, when you go downstairs, then. Mm -hmm. yes. It's all right. I've deemed this one of the greatest times of my life when I have the privilege to stand before the purchase of the blood of Christ to speak the gospel. Therefore, I like to come reverently and discreetly and soberly and into the fear of God when we come to speak to such an audience as this. For there are around, I suppose, a thousand people here, and many of those are blood-washed saints. And there may be those here who are trying to make a decision just on what to do. So then we all should remember to conduct ourselves like Christians ought to. For we know that we are written epistles of God, read of all men. Now tomorrow night it has been given out that we are going to have a healing service. That is, not what we could say a healing service, but pray for the sick. I have never been able to get it into the minds of the people, not the church, but the outside, that we cannot heal. I never did heal anybody. I never will. But I've had some real direct answers to prayer. God has honored the prayer that I've prayed many times. That's what we want to do for the sick tomorrow night. I had a little talk today. I just couldn't go on through. My conscience was condemning me. And I had to talk with Brother Grant. I haven't known Brother Grant too well, but I found him to be the type of man that I thought he was. Real Christian gentlemen, meek, 
But the other night, not knowing that he was even in the convention, I spoke from the platform saying one night we always give to healing. I was called to speak, but we'll pray for the sick one night and let's make that Friday night. Brother Grant sitting here was already advertised for that to be a night that he would give a Holy Ghost rally. And yet Brother Joseph told me that it was already understood and considered by Brother Grant, but I felt that I had to tell him myself that I didn't know that. What a fine man I found in Brother Grant. He's having the rallies in his own meetings and wanted to turn it over for the sick people to pray for the sick. Brother Grant, very humbly, has been used of God himself in praying for the sick. And a great man of faith. But he just stayed too long in the service once. It's almost killed him. He's weak and nervous and almost to a nervous breakdown completely. By the time he hits, I hear he's in a heart attack. Overworked. Always oh, said the other night, God's people need a juniper tree. Rest. And let's just wait on the Lord. Then we renew our strength as we wait on Him. Don't try to do it all. I remember staying in the prayer line for seven days and nights, eating my meal at the pulpit. Determined I would pray for everyone that come before I sat down. They were ten times more on the last night than there was when I started. Then I almost died. I couldn't sleep. Didn't know where I was at hardly. I was so tired and weary. It doesn't pay to do that. Jesus doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to take care of ourselves. No one never know what those visions does to me. They're awful hard on me. And if it could just be one and then the rest of them would be all right, but if it's one, it's got to be all, or they just don't want to believe it. So the church is not in its right state yet. We have to remember that it's not matured. So we just have to linger and do the best we can. And there's no one can bring it to maturity, only the Holy Spirit, as we listen to it. I don't believe it'll ever come by man. It'll have to come by God. But tomorrow night, the Lord willing, we're going to pray for the sick. And I'll send Billy, my son, and if he don't come, then Gene or Leo, one will be giving out prayer cards. Their brother Stossman, I see him back there from Canada. He's with us in the convention. Some of them will be giving out prayer cards tomorrow night about 6 o'clock so it won't interfere with the rest of the service. And then on Saturday night, I learned this since I've come, that Brother Osborne, my precious friend, is having his film showed here in the city. I suppose it's been announced from here. And uh, it'll be showed Saturday night at this certain theater or school auditorium. And I would ask all of you to go and see that. Tommy Osborne is one of the finest Christian gentlemen I ever met. The real servant of Christ. Genuine. And I have a great respect and love for him. And being that I'm here in the city and... I, I, I want to go Sunday afternoon myself to see the film, but tomorrow night I'm going many, many miles away to another church. Saturday night, I meant to say. Going to another church for a little service, perhaps just to preach to the, a little sermon and come back because it's a short or a small church. There's not many can come in. It's associated with this church. And then Sunday afternoon, I aim to see the film myself. And then Sunday night is a, another service, and in that service, we will pray for the sick again, the Lord willing. Sunday night at the auditorium, your pastor here told me this morning as we were talking, such a gallant spirit that he had, he said they would close this church, that they would not have services at the Philadelphian church while we were in the city praying for the sick. That's mighty gallant. We are thankful for that. For our brother Mead, who told me that this morning. 
Saturday morning is the Christian businessman's breakfast. I suppose that that's been, that it, it's that. And then I think tomorrow morning is the ministerial breakfast, and that's held at the Sheridan Plaza, and the Christian businessman, Edgewater Beach. And so I believe I'm to speak at both of these services. So the Lord bless you now as we ask His blessings on the reading of the Word and that He will give us tonight of His Spirit. Now let us lay aside every little fret and flusteration of the day. Not a weary, cast aside everything and now look to Him for the next 30 or 40 minutes. Lord, we are glad that we have the living Word and the written Word, and they bear record one with the other. That makes us rest assured that when we read this blessed Bible that is a challenge to us, and we know the one who wrote it is present, ever present, to make every word true and right. So sink the words tonight deeply into the hearts of the people with the Holy Spirit. Water it with confession and repentance that it might grow into great trees of salvation that wayward men and women might come set under its branches and take rest for their souls. Get glory unto thyself, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take the text tonight called this, The Time of Decision. I want to read from Genesis twenty-four fifty-eight, just one verse. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. You know, we have been forced to make decisions. There is times when we have to come to the place where we've got to say yes or no. That's just in human life. There's a time where we cannot stand mutual. And if God shall permit, I don't believe that we'll be able to leave this church tonight in the same conditions we did when we come into it. If the Holy Spirit shall come and do His work among us, then we are forced to say yes or no. We cannot remain the same. And the time had come for Abraham, the great patriarch and servant of God, to make a decision. And this decision was that he was to decide just on who his son Isaac, that he had waited 25 years for, and had received him as one from the dead, and know that he was a called and separated messenger of God. And there was a time come when he had to make the decision who would be his helpmate to carry on the plan of God. You see, God don't make all of our decisions. And there's many times that God doesn't tell His prophets just what to do because they have to make the decision. If there is no decision that we have to make, just wait every move on God, then there is no overcoming on our part. And sometimes they make the wrong decision. God anointed prophets make the wrong decisions and many times are deceived. Did you ever think of Isaac when Esau and Jacob came up to this mighty prophet of the Lord sitting there physically blind and at that time spiritually blind 
And Jacob had placed a piece of sheepskin around his neck and wore Esau's coat so he'd smell like the fields. And his father with his prophetic hands laid on his son was spiritually deceived by his son, yet being a prophet. How did Elijah, the mighty man of God, when the Shunammite woman came rushing in weepingly, Elijah knew that she was troubled and he said, God has kept it from me. So the time has been allotted to every man to make his decision, whether he is a preacher or a prophet or a church member or what more, he's got to make a decision. And this time came and Abraham was determined that he did not want his son to marry an unbeliever. That would be good decision for our Christians today who are sons and daughters of Abraham to make the same decision about their children. Now, it didn't make any difference how pretty those unbelieving girls were and how nicer women they were, but Abraham did not want his son connected with that kind of stuff. And so he had to make a time of decision on who he should marry. And then the time came that he had to make a decision on who he would send to select this bride for Isaac. And when that time came, he looked over all his servants and we learn in here a beautiful lesson of Abraham, a type of God the Father, hunting for a servant to go find the bride for his son. That's what the Father is doing today. He's looking over his group to see someone that he can put trust in that'll take the message that he sends to the bride. And he decided that Eliezer was the selected one because he had found Eliezer a trustworthy servant He had been loyal and true and upright and just and honest. That's the kind of a servant that God can pick to take a message from him to the church as one that's been proven to be just. You remember my sermon the last time here on the selecting or the placing of a son. How that he was proven first and then adopted into the family or placed positionally. And Eliezer met the requirement that Abraham was requiring. And Abraham represents the model servant. You've read the story in Genesis 24. But how he did not go until he was sent. There's many goals just for what money they can get out of it. These others goals to make a great name for themselves. There's others goals to be popular. There's others goals because of some man-made regime sends them. But there's some that will wait until God sends them. The model servant will do that. And notice, when he went, he only went where he was sent to. 
Not just come over here because there's more money or down here because there's bigger crowds. He went exactly where he was sent to. God's looking for man today that will move when the Spirit moves anywhere that he may stand. That's a model servant. Not only that, but when he got to his place where his message was to be given, he never boasted on himself. He never spoke about how great he was or how great his meetings was or how great anything about himself. He wasn't a boaster or proud, but he only spoke of his master and of his master's wealth. And that his master had a son that was going to fall heir to everything the master had. What a beautiful picture of a real servant of God. His whole attention is on the master, telling the people not about himself, but about the master. And about the son, and he's going to fall heir to all things. He has so much time talking about the master and the son until he has no time to boast on himself or his or his great regime or his denomination or uh, some affiliation that he has. It's all on the master. Now Eliezer was confronted with a great problem like ministers are today. There was a whole lot of women that he could choose from. And the choice had to be urgent. We don't have time to sit around and think it over or wonder. We've got to make the decision quickly. The time is at hand. This may be people sitting here tonight this will be your last time to make your decision. It's urgent. Don't gamble on tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come for you. Like the woman one time, she had two men that she was thought she was in love with. And she did not know which one to marry. And she'd think a while she would marry one and then she thought she'd marry the other. And she put her decision off too long and lost both of them. We better watch. The decision must be quickly. Then again, the servant wasn't satisfied here. Was just going, he wanted some kind of an assurance. And he kept questioning, what if the woman won't come? When I tell her these things, what if she doesn't come? Then what? Then he had to make a decision. Then when he heard from his master's lips, the angel of God shall go before you. Oh, I just like that so much. It just fits my face right there. The angel of the Lord shall go before you and he will persuade her. God sent his angel with his messenger. God does that, you know. That's the way he does it. He sent Daniel, he sent others, and he sent an angel with them. So he every time does the same thing. For it's his way of speaking. And he said, the angel, the, the angel of heaven will go before you. Oh yes, there is times when you have hard decisions to make. There's times when you, maybe in your middle age, you have your life earned and you put a little here and a little there 
But now you've got to a place maybe that that money has to be invested somewhere. You've got to make a decision where you will put that money. And before you invest that money, you'll first find a place for it safely put. Oh, we have things today that this get rich overnight. Invest it here and tomorrow you're a millionaire. But you wouldn't put your money in such a place as that because it's your life earnings. But what will you do with sober and sincerity? You'll search for no reliable firm that's been tested and proved. One that's safe. And there you'll invest your money because you don't want none of this fly by night. And if you're that sincere and concerned in your decision about your life earnings, how much more sincere should you be about your religion and your salvation? We shouldn't go for some of these little fly by night ideas to put your name on a church book and shake hands with the preacher. That won't work. I'll recommend you tonight to an old reliable institution that was founded on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came down to dwell among men. It's the most reliable firm that I know of to invest your soul and your future in eternity in an old-fashioned Pentecostal experience. It's been time-tested and it's proved to be the truth. Two thousand years hasn't changed it a bit. And the same dividends that was paid off at Pentecost is still being paid off by this firm. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of healing, the seed visions, angels to appear to you, and the ministry that the apostles had that carried them safely to will take you to your soul destination. Just as safe as it landed down. I cannot trust my life earnings if I had such upon a fly by night. I don't want any of these little organizations that sprung up here in these last days in my name on a paper or some kind of a little sensation. I want the old reliable experience. Make your decision to make a firm confession and wait till you get that experience to move you on into eternity. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's done good to Peter that night in the jail. The next day he was to be beheaded and the angel of the Lord came in as a pillar of fire and touched him and delivered him. That same angel still on the, the getting in tonight. It still accompanies the firm of the Holy Ghost and the church of the living God. The same angel of God that was with Paul on the stormy sea that night when the devil's a glee in life had ever spoke a lightning had flashed across the way. He come running out of there with the assurance and he said, the angel of God whose servant I am has stood by me. There's not going to be a soul lost on this ship. I would recommend you to that firm. It's reliable. It's safe. The name of the Lord is the mighty power. The righteous run into it in our faith. Just deposit yourself in that account tonight. God will take care of His own. The deposit is safe. It's accompanied by angels. 
and it has signs and wonders and visions and it shows the direct evidence of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Yes, I want it that old time religion it's good enough for me. It landed my old father. It landed Paul and Silas. It made Paul when they were going to cut his head off say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith and henceforth as they have for me. A crown of righteousness that the Lord the righteous judge shall give me. I highly recommend that place. If you're under decision tonight and you have not yet decided whether you be Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, or Presbyterian, let me introduce to you the old time religion. For it is good. You can rest your soul's assurance that he'll take you through. Eliezer, when he had the assurance that the angel was going before him, then he could decide to go because he had something to back him up. I think that ought to be the assurance of every man of God that preaches the gospel. That he's got something positive from God that'll back up what he preaches. If you haven't got it, brethren, it's for you. God still sends his man with an angel before him when he goes to take the message to the church. Not only that, but when Eliezer left, the father of Isaac, which represented the father of Christ, he loaded a whole train of camels with good gifts for the bride. Oh, I feel religious right now. Oh, how I love Jesus. He loaded the camels full of good gifts to give to the bride. And he never told her that they were for another generation or another day. But they were for the bride. And ever true servant of God that sent out got a whole book full of divine promises that he can offer to the bride. I'm so glad of that. He's got gifts in there for her. And he'll not hold any of them back. He'll give every one of them freely a true servant, a model servant. A servant that God can put trust in. He won't try to hide it back from her because he knows that she is the oncoming queen. Oh, there is no good thing with help from them that will walk up right before him. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. If ye abide in me and my words in you, ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. The book full of it. Every promise in the book is yours. You the bride. He came to the well in the evening time. Now it's come a time that when Eliezer had to make another decision. He had to make a decision whether he would trust his own opinion of the woman or would he trust God's opinion of the woman. Oh, how true servantship that's so mixed up. They'll look around at some big fine church of painted Jezebel and say, that's where the Lord's are calling you. They call your intellectuals and said, Dr. So-and-so preaches that. Let God speak to you. Take God's decision of who she'll be. Who you'll come into to fellowship with. I don't care what level it's on. Come anyhow. Let God speak. And it was in the evening time when he come to the well near the city. And it was 
was about that time that Rebecca had to make a decision. I believe the angel of the Lord beat him there about a half hour. Or you send his angels before you. They'll make the way clear. And it must have been the angel of God that spoke to Rebecca's heart to go get the water. And Rebecca came to the water of life at the easy time. You get the picture? It's the church. In the last days, the evening time. The evening lights are here. It's the time that the angel of the Lord in the supernatural is revealing himself to the Rebecca, the bride of Isaac. And somehow or another, she's wooed to go to the waters of life. Amen. Oh, my heart is turning over with joy. I can hardly preach when I think of that. The evening time has come. The angel of the Lord's in the message goes forth and woos the Rebecca to come to the waters of life. Moving of the supernatural. Ella Ezer started praying, Oh Lord God, let something supernatural happen. Oh my. You sent your angel before me, now let him do something. I know he's gone before me. Let the young woman that comes and gives me a drink out of the pitcher and also will water my camels without asking. Let that be the one in here. No more than satisfied for Rebecca come. God's right on the dock. No more than your heart goes to hunger and thirsting. For God, some kind of a Holy Ghost revival will break out somewhere. Something will take place. A neighbor will get healed and come tell you about something will take place. I'll let you see that the angel of the Lord is a movie. So, why did Rebecca make that sudden move? Why did she go to the waters of life so quickly? Why could the angel speak to her? Because she was a blood relation to Isaac. And that's who the angel can speak to tonight is the blood relation. By the blood we are born into the body of Christ. Rebecca was Isaac's own cousin by both fathers, which made them blood relations. And the bride of Jesus Christ is sanctified to the blood of Christ and an open vessel for the Holy Spirit to speak to. No wonder she'll come to the waters of life. He that heareth, let him come to the waters of life freely. The bride said, Come. He that's a thirst, let him come. Blessed are ye when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be filled. It's the promise of the Father. She made her decisions quick. Watch a real Christian in the meeting. Quickly, if they're ordained the eternal life, they'll know it. There's something in the message that stirs them. That's what stirred Rebecca. The message stirred her. Angel was leading her. Oh, can't you see the picture? The angel of the Lord leading her. Then she was stirred. And immediately when she watered the camel, the gift went on her. He began to take out the earrings, which means faith cometh by hearing. Put the braces on the works of your hands. He got her ready. As soon as she began to water, give the waters of life, testify, tell others, get the message out. Tell them what has happened to you. And then there was another great decision had to be made. Then after she was given, then the parents said, well, I would let let her stay around about ten days. Let her hang around the revival to really see 
whether she has decided to do it or not. I haven't got much confidence in a person make a decision to wait even until tomorrow. But the message had stirred Rebecca. She was satisfied the message was from God. So the parents said, Oh, let her stick around a while. She'll get over it. It's just a little excitement. She's over to that revival, you know. But oh, then the, the true servant said, Don't, don't weary us. Don't hinder me. A lot of the servants of God have been hindered by put off decisions. Don't hinder me seeing that the Lord has sent me. Seeing that he's been good to me. Don't hinder me. Then they said, let her make her own decision. That's where you stand tonight. Make your own decision. Then they called Rebecca and said, will you go with this man? Or do you want to stay around a little while to see what you really want to do? She said, I will go. She was ready. Her decision was quickly made. She knew that something been leading her. She knew something had happened to her. And she knew that it was God and she was satisfied. She wanted to go quickly. So she put on her garment and she got all the gifts that was sent to her by the Father to meet the Son. Oh, God, if the church could only make that decision right quick. Put on all of her gifts. And she climbed up on the camel and took out. And it was in the evening time when Isaac had wandered from the tent out into the fields to meditate. And when he seen the camels coming, Rebecca looked at him and it was love at the first sight. She had to believe it before she went. Faith cometh by hearing. She didn't know what the man looked like and it didn't make no difference. It was God making the decision. I don't care whether he's big or little. What color he is, that makes me no difference. He's my Lord. I love him when I see him because he's God's gift to me and to you. She lighted off the camel and she had the veil from her face and as her lovely eyes caught the eyes of Isaac into her arms, he went and took her to the mother's place, to the father's place, and married her. Brother, listen, there's no time to linger. It's time to make the decision. What kind of an effect has the message made on you? Are you ready to say, I will go? I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. In the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand times, said the poet. He's on your hands tonight, just like he was piled of old, and it's later than you think. What decision will you make now when you see his angel moving, see the message come? Jesus is coming soon. The angel of God is here on the earth, going before the servants, performing signs and wonders just like Jesus said he would do. And he's here now. Make your decision and come to him while we bow our heads. How many in here now with the head bowed? And the great Holy Spirit, the true servant of God, is knocking at your heart and saying, Oh, maybe I've depended a whole lot on my denomination and my brothers. But I want to go tonight to Jesus with all that's in me. 
I've been just a little against the supernatural. I, I've wondered about angels, but oh, the message now has just done something to my heart. I feel something pumping within me that tells me the message is right. I don't wait till tomorrow. I don't wait any longer. This is my time of decision. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, how many in this big audience would raise your hands and say, I make my decision, whether it be hard or whether it be easy, whether it means to be called holy roller, whether it means to be called fanatic or religious crank, I'll take my decision tonight to meet the Lord Jesus. I believe the message. I want to be remembered in prayer. Raise up your hand. God bless your gallant soul. About two dozen, I guess, in this building with their hands up. Oh, Lord. You see them and you know them. Let the Holy Spirit now bring that Rebecca to the waters of life for the cooling refreshing from the presence of God shall bathe their part soul and bring unto them new life and new hope. Let the angel of God who has been sent before the message Speak to the blood relation that's been bought by the precious Christ. All these hands that's in the air, Lord, may they sweetly and humbly receive thee just now and be lighted up on the camel the power of God that shall cut them to the presence of the Master. May every good gift that's promised be braced upon them. May the gift of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness, patience, faith be given unto them out of the great treasure house of God who promised all things freely to them that would come. They had their decision, Lord. They've raised their hands. They've made up their minds tonight. And you can speak to those who are blood washed. Thou knowest them, Lord. We command them unto thee that at that meeting time when the church meets Jesus in the air, and we believe that he's already left the Father's house and is on his road to the earth and he's in the fields of the great beyond, out in the fields meditating, and the bride making herself ready, and soon she'll be on her way. The scripture says that we'll meet the Lord in the air. He's already left and coming after his bride. Let us be ready for this may be the last call. The evening time is here. I commit them unto thy hands in thy keeping, Lord. Through Jesus Christ we ask it and give to you the copies of the message. Amen. The emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old rock where and there a world of law is what so I carry so rugged long till my throat is there Ah. Uh.
I know him. That's about all that I see that I know. But if God still is God, if God sends his messenger yet with an angel, the angel will testify that it's the truth. Let it be known tonight that God is still God. And I do not speak of myself, but I speak of Him. Yeah. And if you be the bride, the Rebecca, 
The Bible said that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And when he was touched in the days of his flesh, he could turn and tell the woman what her troubles was. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible has good gifts the Father sends to his children. Now you don't notice the messenger, but believe the message. And God will unload to you tonight his promises. For they're just as good for you that raise your hand for salvation. Uh, they're just as good for you that's raised your hand for sickness. Just the same God. Same gifts that He's always had working the same way. Now pray. Believe. Let the Lord God do the deciding. Then establish your faith upon God's eternal Word. Make your decision tonight to serve Him. May the Lord God show at least three people in this building which three is a confirmation. Is that enough? That He sent His angel and I am not speaking these things to myself. It's Him. And this day, when you're undecided, may you decide for Him. Here, there's a little woman sitting over here with her handkerchief, never took it out of her hand and kept her hand up. Am I a stranger to you, young lady, sitting there praying? You believe that God can tell me what your trouble is? You're facing an operation. That's right, isn't it? If that's right, raise up your hand. I do not know you. If that's right, raise your, pray your hand like this. But that's the truth, isn't it? What do you think? Have you made your decision? All right, stay with it then. There's an elderly lady sitting right here with a red looking dress on with her hands like this. You're praying. And you're praying for God to heal you. I don't know you. God does know you. If the Lord will tell me what you're praying for, will you accept it and believe that His angel has come to you to bless you? For over you stands that light. Got arthritis and nervousness. That's right, raise up your hand. All right? Have you made your decision? All right. Go home and forget about ever being sick, man. Jesus Christ will make you well. I see a little lady sitting back here. Hands up like this. She's praying. She's pressing. I don't know her. She's gray. But she's got heart trouble that she's praying for. That's right. That's her sister sitting next to her. And she's praying for nervous trouble. That's right, isn't it, ladies? I don't know you. God does. You're not from this city, neither of you. You're from Illinois, though. Danville. That's right. Your name is T O G U E. That's right. Go home. You have your answer. God give you both. Yeah. Just have faith. Did that thrill you, lady? Sitting right here looking at me? I've seen you smile. A little checky looking dress on teeth. As I turned around, the angel of the Lord was standing here. You're suffering trouble with the feet. You got a friend you're praying for too. You got asthma. That's right, isn't it? Raise your hand if that's right. Amen. You believe? The angel of the Lord. Somebody else, raise your hand. I don't know, and you want God to help you? That's everywhere. Has that, that's been more than three, has it? All right. That ought to convince it. God's here. 
God loves you all. I can't help from saying this. There's a lady sitting here that's desperately in need. She's looking at me. I can't. There stands the light above the woman. You believe he'll help you? You're not from here either. You're from Iowa. Des Moines, and Iowa. You believe that he'll heal you? You have a scientist trouble. That's right. You have a habit you want to quit. Smoking cigarettes. Will you give it up? Raise your hands. I'll give it up, Lord. All right, go home. You smoke no more and your sinus is over because your faith has made you well. God bless you. Believe. Do you believe with all your heart? The angel of the Lord accompanies the message always. Have you made your decision that he's God? Then put your hands over on one another. You don't have to wait till tomorrow night. Let it be tonight. When the Holy Spirit spoke to me a few minutes ago, I, I didn't wait till tomorrow night. Tonight was the night for healing. Tonight's the night for forgiveness. Lay your hands over on one another. Jesus in his message here from the power of God, the word of God, I got a message for you. Here, I'm going to take it out of the satchel. These signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. It's for you, Rebecca. What does it say? If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Hallelujah. Do you believe it, Rebecca? Well, here comes the gift. Receive it. Catch it. And put it in your purse. Lord God, in Jesus Christ's name, condemn every devil and cast out all sickness and make every person well through Jesus Christ our Lord.